In today's episode, you will learn how to make IoT based water quality monitoring system using GDS sensor DS18B20 waterproof one wire digital temperature sensor and ESP32 Wi Fi plus Bluetooth module by the Expressive Systems. As this project is based on the IoT Internet of Things based technology, so the EC electrical conductivity and temperature can be monitored from anywhere around the world using the Blink application. The PCB board used in this project is sponsored by the PCBA company. The Gerber files of the ESP32 power supply PCB board can be downloaded from the PCBA official website. You can find a link in the description. EC or electrical conductivity of water is its ability to conduct an electric current. Salts or other chemicals that dissolve in water can break down into positively and negatively charged ions. These free ions in the water conduct electricity. So the water electrical conductivity depends on the concentration of ions. Salinity and total dissolved solids TDS are used to calculate the EC of water which helps to indicate the water's purity. The purer the water, the lower the conductivity. To give a real-life example, distilled water is almost an insulator, but salt water is a very efficient electrical conductor. Currently, the EC value which you can see on the gauge is the EC value of the fresh water. Let's see what happens when we start adding the salt. As you can see, the EC value has increased. This is version 2 of the water quality monitoring system, which is more stable, cost effective, and easy to build. While version 1 of the water quality monitoring system was based on the Arduino 16 into 2 LCD, DS18B20, and TDS sensor. In version 1 of the water quality monitoring system, I have explained the extreme basics including the TDS sensor pinout, basic working principle, circuit diagram, Arduino programming, and so on. So in this episode, I will not explain the things which I have already explained in my previous tutorial. You can find a link in the description. In this tutorial, we will cover number one, TDS sensor and ESP32 complete circuit diagram explanation. Number two, TDS sensor and ESP32 programming and finally number 3 testing. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. The circuit diagram is very simple. Let's start with the gravity TDS sensor V1.0. The minus pin which is the ground pin of the TDS sensor is connected with the ground pin of the ESP32 module. The plus pin is the input supply voltage pin is connected with the 3.3 volt pin of the ESP32 module. The output analog pin of the TDS sensor is connected with the A0 pin of the ESP32 module. A0 pin is basically the GPIO pin 36. The VCC wire of the DS18B20 is connected with the 3.3 volts pin of the ESP32 module. The data wire of the DS18B20 is connected with the GPIO pin 13 of the ESP32 module and the ground wires connected with the ground pin of the ESP32 module. A 330 ohm resistor is connected between the VCC and data wire of the DS18B20 waterproof one wire digital temperature sensor. The power supply is based on the famous LM7805 voltage regulator. This regulated power supply is used to power up the ESP32 module. 
J1 is the female DC power jack and this is where we connect a 12 volt adopter, battery or a solar panel. Two 470 microfarad electrolyte capacitors are connected at the input and output sides of the voltage regulator. At the output of the voltage regulator, a 330 ohm resistor is connected in series with a 25 volt LED. This is a current limiting resistor. A wire from the output of the voltage regulator is connected with the 5 volt pin of the ESP32 module. Make sure you connect the ground of the 5 volt regulated power supply with the ground of the ESP32 module. So that's all about the circuit diagram. This is the ESP32 power supply board which I designed in my previous tutorial. As you can see the PCB quality is really great. The silk screen is quite clear and the Blake solder mask looks amazing. I'm 100% satisfied with your work. The Gerber files of the PCB board can be downloaded from the PCBWay official website. You can find a link in the description. Finally, I connected everything as per the circuit diagram already explained. Now let's start with the blink application. Follow the same exact steps. Before you start the programming, first of all make sure that you download all the necessary libraries from our website electronicclinic.com. You can find a link in the description. As you can see I have added so many libraries. As in the future I am planning to make an IoT based hydroponic system for which I will need all of these libraries. Currently I am not using some of these libraries. The data wire of the DS18B20 is connected with the ESP32 GPIO pin 13. If you want, you can use any other GPIO pin. This is the authentication code which was sent via email. I simply copied and pasted it over here. This is the name of the Wi-Fi router and this is the password. Next, I defined a timer. In the white setup function, I activated the serial communication for the debugging purposes. 115200 is the bar trade. If you are not using the EEP ROM and the pH sensor, you can delete these two lines. Main function is a user defined function which is executed after every one second. The project entire code is placed inside this function. In the while loop function, I have added only two functions which are the blink.run and timer.run functions. As I said earlier, main function is a user defined function. It has no return type and does not take any arguments as the input. The analog output pin of the TDS sensor is connected with the ESP32 analog pin A0 which is the GPIO pin 36 which I have already explained in the circuit diagram. Next, we read the temperature and store the value and variable temperature. The following instructions are used to send the temperature values to the serial monitor for the debugging purposes. Next, we convert the voltage to EC with temperature compensation and send values to the serial monitor 
to make sure we are getting the correct values. Finally, we send the temperature and EC values to the Blink application through virtual pins V2 and V3. So that's all about the programming. The circuit diagram, libraries and programming can be downloaded from our website electronicclinic.com. I have already uploaded this program. Let's watch this project in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.